AV Alive with a product spotlight, the long awaited, we'll call it part two, ATM TV studio slash ATM switcher video. It's really kind of ironic. This is almost three years later, if I'm not mistaken, but it's good timing because as of this date in November 2014, Blackmagic has recently done a major update of the ATM software. Now, for those who know the ATM TV studio and ATM 4K switchers, the software basically is the same for all the switchers. So basically what we're going to cover today will be how to install a basic switcher, any switcher of course from the ATM TV studio all the way up to the ATM 2ME 4K. And further we'll be discussing some of the features on the new software. Subsequent videos will deal with issues like uh, putting yourself on a network that is populated by uh, Dominator custom IPs. And a further video will also discuss how to make your uh, MacBook or Mac or Windows be a streaming computer along with controlling the ATM. So again, in this video, we're gonna primarily deal with the ATM and how to set it basically up uh, with the new software, which currently is version, according to the Blackmagic website, 6.1.1. This is a brand new version that came out here in November and uh, it replaces, of course, 6.1, which was the last OSX Lion supported software. So if you do not have a Mountain, uh, excuse me, if you do not have a Mavericks or Yosemite base Mac or higher, this software uh, uh, will not work for you. You'll have to download the 6.1 and the features that you'll see here won't necessarily carry over to the older version. So the first question you gotta ask yourself is what version of software I'm running, of course, on the Mac, you can do about this Mac and see it right here. In this case, we're at 10.9.2, which is uh, okay to run version 6.1.1. So what do you need to do a setup? A ethernet cable and a USB cable. So basically you'll need to have both hooked up to your system. Of course, the ATM is controlled over ethernet. So uh, ethernet is the uh, protocol of how we switch. USB is how we do firmware and IP change updates. So the USB is nothing fancy. It's a USB standard 2.0 uh, standard. The ethernet, just a good solid ethernet. Now I'm on a MacBook Retina, which basically requires you to have a Thunderbolt adapter uh, hooked into the uh, ethernet uh, cord. So you'll need one of those if you're on a current MacBook. If you're on a, a PC with a built-in ethernet port, of course, that's all you need and USB 2.0. So with that said, let's take a quick look at the uh, specifications for the ATM software currently. We got USB 3.0 support, that's new. We got uh, more performance and uh, stability improvements. And again, as we discussed, 10.10 .10 Yosemite or 10.9 Mavericks or higher, uh, the USB uh, 2.0. And then here's interesting, in Windows, you have to be at 64-bit, either in Windows 7 or Windows 8. So older version of Windows also lose their support. This obviously looks like to be a true 64-bit version of software from Blackmagic. They don't mention that, but according to the specs, it looks pretty close. So the first thing you would do is go download the software from the Blackmagic support website, which basically has been recently overhauled, overhauled this summer. And basically you choose your uh, uh, product, which in this case is the ATM. And again, as I told you before, uh, the ATM TV Studio is uh, all basically the same software, so there's no distinction between the versions that you have. Today's demo is going to focus primarily around the ATM uh, TV Studio and the Behringer, so that's what we're going to be talking about, how to set up. So let's take it from there. I have gone ahead and downloaded the software. I have it ready right here, so I'm going to double click on it. And as you can see, it mounts and it's got a shiny brand new logo here. Install the ATM 6.1. We're gonna leave everything to default, no problem there. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, continue the installation here. All 810 megs.
And now the machine's gonna require a restart. So let's go ahead and restart and we'll take it from there. We're gonna open up our MacBook Retina and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the uh, ATM setup utility first. The uh, instructions that are included here basically uh, tell you that the Blackmagic's ship with a default address, meaning on the machine itself of a 192.168.10.40. That is the uh, IP range that it's working in. Of course, if you're on a network, you'll have to see our other video, how to configure it on a custom network. But directly machine to the uh, black magic is what we're going to be dealing with here today. So we're going to uh, focus in on the address again they say in the manual to do and change. So we're going to go take a look at that real quick with the setup utility. So as you can see, that it is telling us that the address of the machine is indeed 192.168.10.240. The subnet mask is 255.255, and the gateway is uh, 192.168.10.1. That is the default. We're going to leave it alone. There's no need to change it. Uh, it may say something about a firmware update as we get ready to turn on the software. We'll take a look at that in a second. The next thing we have to do is configure our Mac and be able to talk to the network that this is on. In other words, the custom network that it ships with, we want to have a direct connect. And that's very simple. You go in your Mac and you go to your network preferences. And of course in Windows you would do the same. And we'd go choose our ethernet port and we'd have to change it. Normally you're at DHCP in most situations, you'd have to go manual. Now this is important to know, you're gonna lose your airport connection, excuse me, you're gonna lose your uh, standard ethernet connection doing this if you're using, connecting via ethernet. So again, you're gonna go manual you're gonna have your IP address set to 192.168.10.50. And you're gonna have your subnet mask set to 255.255.255.0. And that's all you're gonna to need to do. You're gonna to have to hit apply, which we've already done. And now you should be able to start the software. Now I expect to see a firmware question. And we don't have one, meaning that our firmware is the latest and greatest, so that's good. If you had a firmware question here, you would need to be able to uh, have your machine in a always powered on mode. You do not want to lose the machine in a firmware update. The firmware would uh, happen, and uh, when you're done, you'd have to repower your uh, black magic uh, and recycle it uh, through the power in the network, and then Again, when you would reload, you would see this screen here, which is uh, the new screen. Uh, much different graphics, as you can tell from the previous screen. And you see that the buttons are lit, meaning that it is indeed talking to the machine. Okay, so one other point to make note, uh, this may be a change within the software itself. But to confirm that uh, your ATM, again, the default settings being 240, are correct, you can check that right here. If you came up and the uh, panel was not lit, chances are that this setting has changed. So those are one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to have to uh, check on your own if the buttons are not lit, that in your preferences in the software, that the host machine is indeed at the address you thought it was. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more content.